presented by Max Prairie Wings, America's premier waterfowl outfitter. Hey guys, this is Brad Allen, three-time world's duck calling champion, lifelong duck hunter, and owner of Elite Duck Calls, and welcome to the art of flight control. Now, when we started our company, we had a vision to not only make the best sounding duck calls on the market, we also wanted to help our customers be the best call operators and hunters that they could be. And that's what's brought us to this recording studio today. Now, when I was learning to call as a youngster, I had very limited options. Basically, I had two choices of a duck call to blow, which was the two that were carried in the local hardware store. And occasionally, I could borrow an instructional record or cassette tape uh, to give me some duck calling instruction. The problem with these were that they took you right through the basics, but they left you hanging with a lot of questions and a lot of work left to do. So what we're setting out to do is to produce a comprehensive program that'll take you all the way through the very basics, on through advanced calling and application in the duck line. So get your calls out, get comfortable, because we got a lot to talk about. All right, let's get started with our advanced techniques. Now, what you're gonna discover is that as you learn the basics, you're just trying to learn how to sound like a duck. Once you get that mastered, you're gonna start to get greedy and you're gonna wanna learn how to sound like all of them. So let's think about ways that we can vary our air presentation and sound like multiple ducks. Now, with the quack, we can do this just by changing the position of the tongue in our mouth. I have heard people say, man, this call sounds flat. And what they're doing is they're blowing the quack with their tongue low in their mouth and they're not putting a lot of air pressure in there and it would sound like this. All right, they say well, that sounds flat. It's not really the call. If they would uh, blow a faster burst of air in there, raise their tongue a little bit, it would sound like this. All right, so. If I want to sound like a lower pitch duck, I'm going to lower my tongue down and then I'll gradually raise it up so that you can, you can hear the difference. Hear how the pitch comes up as the tongue goes higher? Another thing that I can do is I can change the direction of the call and the speed that I'm blowing the quack and sound like multiple ducks on the water. So it would sound like this. That sounds really good whenever you're hunting early and the light is low, ducks are flying over. Sounds like multiple ducks that are sitting on the water. Another trick that we can do is rather than end the note with a T or K sound, we can just let the note die off, raise our tongue up in the, in the palate to push air forward and it will make a whining sound. So just imagine if this hand is the top of my, of my mouth, this is the top of my palate, this hand is my tongue. As I blow the quack, I'm just gonna raise the tongue up like this to push air forward, all right? So it will sound something like this. As opposed to the shut off with the T or K sound, we're gonna put the little whine on there by raising the tongue. Now, another thing we can do is let's just see how soft we can get with the call. This will allow us to sound like multiple ducks and it'll also help us gain control uh, over the call. Now, when I do this, one little trick that I have is I like to put uh, the tone board at the top of the call. And as you can see in this illustration, as I'm looking into the barrel, the tone board is at the top, the insert is turned so that the reed is down. Now this does two things. To me, this gives me greater control over the call and it also helps for the call not to stick. So as moisture is going into the call, gravity is pulling it away from the reed. And for guys that have trouble sticking their call, sometimes just turning the call this way and keeping it oriented as you call will really help with that problem. But let's do some quacks. Let's turn the tone board to the top and let's just see how quiet we can be. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow air softly from the, from the front of the mouth. It's almost like I'm allowing air to pass around or under the teeth to get just as soft as I can possibly get. <coughs> so 
so we can mix harder, louder quacks with and this will let us call ducks as they're getting closer in we're not going to flare them with volume we're going to keep them interested with the softer quack when we get into advanced techniques uh, involving cadences the possibilities here are really limitless. Remember, just like we said, mallards have different voices just like humans. So let's put a whine sound on the end of a cadence, make it a little bit softer. Now there are two ways to go about this. One is just to let the air pressure die off on the last notes. So it would sound like. All right, you let the pressure die off, you're not getting a hard shut off at the end and you get a little bit of a softer whiny sound at the bottom. All right, that's one way to do it, but what I like to do is going back to the advanced quack, when we raise the tongue up, remember, this is the palate, this is the tongue, we're gonna raise the tongue up, pushing air, the residual air that's in the palate forward, and it's gonna create a whine sound. All right, so I'm just blowing air right, it's almost under the front teeth, very softly, raising the tongue, and that way I can put a whine not only at the end of the call, I can put it on every single note of the cadence like this. Allows you to show a tremendous amount of finesse. So if we take this concept of the wine where we're raising our tongue and pushing the residual air forward, then we can, we can actually do something that's been nicknamed Cajun squeal. And it's just accentuating this and making it more dramatic. So if I really wanna make a hard squeal sound into the call, it would sound like this. All right, now what I think this mimics is as ducks are feeding and they have food that's going into the craw, I think sometimes that gets in there causes a change in pressure and I think that's what you're hearing uh, with the Cajun squeal. Now when you learn to do this, the best way to do it, as with most things, is to start off slow. Now I'm gonna do this really deliberately and this is gonna sound terrible. It's gonna sound like a dog got kicked in the rear end, not that I would know what that sounds like. But we're gonna go really slow and blow this very deliberately. <laughs> As you can see, the jaw drops down a little bit and then you come up and push the tongue forward. While you're practicing this, people are gonna be looking at you funny, but do it quicker, catch it right at the end of the note and then put make it more accentuated. Another variation that we can throw in there is to blow a really fast cadence, and this is sometimes nicknamed a chop call. So just like when we were blowing the quack, we are talking about throwing the hand. We're gonna throw the hand, catch the front of the note, and we're gonna blow it really fast, and it gives a very, a very demanding cadence when done properly. So going the opposite direction now, we can do what we sometimes refer to as a coarse duck or a lower tone duck. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna lower the jaw a little bit, open up the palate, and we're gonna take the air pressure off to try to sound like a duck with a much lower tone. Sounds something like this. Slowing down the air so there's not so much air pressure on it. And it's a really good way to put variation in there. You've got a duck with uh, showing some finesse. Really gives the impression of having multiple ducks. Now, a lot of people say that when you hear a coarse duck, you hear one with a lower tone, that that just means that it's an older duck. They like to compare it to humans. As a lady gets older, her voice is gonna deepen. I don't know if that's true or if it's just that they all have different voices. I don't think that we necessarily know that this one's older or she's a smoker or what it is. I think it's just a different, uh, just a different tone of voice. Killer Drake's, boys. Killer Drake's. 
Now, just like we talked about with the quack, changing the hand position, pointing the call a different direction to sound like multiple ducks, we can do the same thing with the cadence. So we're gonna blow some cadences with hand open, we're gonna choke down, put a little bit more back pressure on it, change the voices a little bit. So it'd be something like this. Another variation that we can throw in there is what we refer to as begging. And it almost sounds as if the duck is saying, please, please. Um, what you're doing is you put pressure on the call and then you allow the pressure to back off. So it sounds like this. All right, so if I'm using the word guit, I'm almost making two syllables out of it, like guit, guit, guit. It's almost like I'm putting a little bit of an Arkansas accent on it. That might be why it's easier from guys that are from the South. And we've also noticed that married guys seem to be a little bit better at this begging concept than the single fellas are. So just back the pressure off. And that gives a little bit of the begging sound. All right, the final variation that we'll talk about with the, uh, with the advanced cadences is, is the bouncing hen. Now, the bouncing hen is something that everybody wants to learn, and I think it may be the most overused call in duck calling. So I would caution you not to overuse this call. I think it's fine to use it. Uh, some people say that ducks do not make this sound, but I have heard it with my own ears, so I know that they do. And what it does is it, it makes a double sound. And most people, when they do it, they do it wrong. They try to say, um, uh, it's almost like a DeWitt sound where they'll do it like this. And that is incorrect. What you want to do, if we, if we think about a quack as being like uh, guick or guit, what we're going to do is add the word chick on the end of it. So it's like guitchick, guitchick, guitchick. And if you look at the illustration, you can see with the CH sound that the tongue comes up. So it's, a, it's an easy place to put a little wine into the call. And as you make the chick sound, that gives you the second syllable of the, of the bouncing hen. So guitchick, guitchick, guitchick. Or guachick, guachick. And then as, a, as you practice it, try to do it very softly and it'll give a little bit more finesse. This is something I've definitely learned to do, but don't overdo it. Now when we start doing some advanced calling with the feed call, really all this is is about gaining control and it, it just comes to you with a lot of practice. It takes a lot of time. So uh, one thing that we can do, remember we talked about three different styles of feed call. We talked about the rolling feed, the stutter feed, uh, and then the broken feed. So if we put all that together, uh, we can blend it and make it sound like a lot of ducks on the water. So here's a mixed bag. Now another technique that we can use for advanced feed is what we call squeaky chatter. Now what this is simulating is grain that is going down into the craw as the duck is doing the feed call or the spacing call. And as the, the feed is going down, it'll make a, a little bit of a squeaky sound. Now what you can do is you tighten up your throat a little bit and it can create a squeaky sound. Or, you know, like we said, you can use the, the sound like tut, tut, tut. Uh, ending with a T, if you'll use the K sound to shut off, I think it makes it a little bit more natural for the squeaky sound. So instead of it sounding like this, I'm gonna tighten up, use the K sound. And if you mix the two, it really sounds like a lot of ducks feeding so that you hear a mixture of just the straight spacing call or feed call and the squeaky chatter uh, blended together. Okay, we can also do some single clucks. 
And what I mean by that is let's take the individual sounds like the, the tut tut sound or the cuck cuck sound and let's slow it down and put more pressure on it and then we'll also tighten up the throw a little bit to get the squeak in there and we'll manipulate the hand at the same time. Now I prefer to use the, uh, the K sounds for this one as, a, as opposed to like tut tut tut. If you use cook 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 I think you'll get a little bit more of a natural sound. Sounds something like this. Cut, 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 and I'm manipulating the hand. All right, sounds more like one single duck feeding, but it accentuates that squeaky chatter. Now we can also sound like more ducks if we change the rhythm of the feed call. Now we've already done this a little bit by speeding it up and slowing it down. Another little trick that I like to do, uh, it's kind of funny to say, but if you use the words kind of like saying, I did it, 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 it gives a little bit of a different rhythm to the feed call and helps break it up. And so this is really good to mix in. So it's like, I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. So if we're blowing straight feed, Just helps break up the rhythm. Sounds like more ducks on the water. All right, the last thing that we'll talk about with the advanced feed is the use of the refuge feed. Now, all we're doing with the refuge feed is we're mixing aggressive feeding call in with cadences, trying to sound like a lot of ducks that are on the water, part of them feeding, uh, some of them coming out with cadences all mixed in together. Works really good with ducks that are at a long distance because it does sound like a big raft of ducks on the water. Now traditionally people use this with the rolling feed and it sounds like this. All right, that works fine, but whenever I'm hunting, I prefer to mix it in and do the refuge feed with broken feed rather than rolling and it sounds like this. All right, now when we start talking about actually applying this uh, in the field, the way that I like to break down uh, duck calling is that there are two basic types of calls. Uh, everything that we just talked about can be classified as either a reactive call or a confidence call. And what I mean by that is with a reactive call, when we hit that duck with, with that call, we are looking for an instant quick reaction out of him. We're wanting him to turn, to pitch, to set his wings. We are looking for him to change his behavior and do what we want him to do. Uh, with confidence calling, the ducks are basically already doing what we want them to do. We just want to keep instilling that confidence in them that those decoys that are, that are down there are actually live ducks. So we want them to keep doing what we want them to do. So if we break this down, we talk about the hail call. If you're hunting and you see ducks at a great distance and you're gonna hit them with a hail call, this is obviously a reactive call. All right, that duck's flying away. We're trying to gain the reaction of getting him to turn and come investigate that sound that he just heard. Now, we go into the basic quack. Uh, most of the time, the basic quack is just a confidence call. The ducks are working. We want it to sound like a, like a mallard hen sitting down there, so. All right, we want to sound natural and we want to keep that duck interested and appeal to its desire to pair. So that's why we're going to use this. Now, you can turn a quack into a reactive call, but a lot of times it's not the reaction you're looking for. You do that too fast. This is actually an alarm call, and if you scare ducks, a lot of times you'll hear a mallard hen doing this as she's getting up and alarming the rest of the flock that there's danger and it's time to get out of there. So be careful with that one. Now as the ducks are coming in and we're starting to work them and we're using the cadences to, to try to direct them, uh, the cadences can definitely fall under either category. They can be reactive calls or they can be confidence calls. Now as the ducks start to circle, 
what you want to keep in mind is you want to you want to call them on the corners. That's kind of a nickname that we've got for it. Now I was giving a seminar once and a guy asked me about calling on the corners because he said that uh, ducks come in and they circle, they don't fly in squares, which I thought was pretty funny. What, what this means basically is just make sure that when you're calling to the ducks, you're calling to wing tips and tail feathers, all right? And if the duck is coming right at you, if that duck is doing exactly what you want, sometimes the best move that you can do is just drop your call and just shut up, all right? I often say in seminars that calling ducks is a lot like, it's a lot like a marriage, okay? If your wife, your significant other is doing exactly what you want them to do, just shut up and let it happen. Don't take a chance on blowing it. So as these ducks are circling, if we want to turn them and we're turning, we're calling toward the wingtips or the tail feathers, uh, one of my favorite calls is what we were talking about, the, the fast cadence or the chop call. All right, that usually triggers a quick reaction in that duck, so that's reactive calling. So anytime I hit them more aggressively, fast or slow, if I put a demanding sound on it, put some volume on it, all right, I'm looking for a reaction, so this is reactive calling. Now, if the ducks are looking very interested, they're looking at the decoys, they've got their wings locked, you can tell they're dialed in, they're locked in on you, and they're wanting to come down, they're just trying to get the right angle. Uh, sometimes, especially if they've been in the air for a little while, we can use some confidence calls with the cadence, and we're just keeping them interested. We're not trying to change their, their path or their idea, we're just keeping them interested and in trying to speed up the process of getting the landing gear down. So a confidence uh, cadence would be like. Just something short like that that's not going to flare them out of the hole. It's not going to spook them. Just going to keep them interested, believing that our decoys are real. Now, a feed call is just like cadences. It can be classified as either reactive or confidence calling. Now, a lot of people think of the feed call as being a confidence call only, but I assure you it can be used to turn ducks. Now, generally as ducks are circling, we'll use a lot of feed a lot of feed calling. If we're in a feeding area, it's a little bit more aggressive. If we're in the timber, uh, we'll use a little bit more stutter feed, keep it in short bursts, and we're primarily using it as a sound that the ducks can line up on, because sometimes they're gonna lose sight of your decoys as they're making their circles in tight timber. So a confidence call with feed would be more like would be more like that. We're just keeping them interested. They're already looking at us, they're interested, they're doing what we want them to do. We just want them to keep doing it. Now, ducks that are flying high, you can use an aggressive feed to actually break them down or get them to turn. Uh, I've seen aggressive feed work well in the timber. I have seen it be absolutely lethal when you're out in a field and you're in an area where ducks are, are feeding aggressively, uh, especially if you have a lot of decoys. They can be flying over and you can break them down with feed almost like a hail call, but you've got to get loud and you've got to get aggressive. So it's almost like a refuge feed at a really high volume. And as ducks are, are circling, if you see them losing, losing interest, even if you're in the timber, be a little bit more aggressive and a little bit louder with your feed call, and that can get the interest back, get them looking at your decoys better. <laughs> Now guys, I want to leave you with one more thought uh, in regards to actually calling ducks in the field. And this is the most critical thing, something that we've got to keep in the forefront of our minds. We've got to learn to read the birds. When we talk about reading the birds, uh, this is the difference between the experienced hunter and the novice. Watch the ducks and see how they react and make a mental note of what they react positively to and what affects them negatively. Uh, we have to make changes whenever we're hunting. Uh, there's no need in being hard-headed about it. If you're calling to ducks and you're, you're calling more aggressively, if they're coming in and you're killing ducks, keep doing what you're doing. If you see them flaring out of the hole, then you have to change something. And you know, ducks teach us something every time that we go hunting. And the factors that, that are going into this, they change from minute to minute. The weather changes will affect how much calling they'll tolerate, 
uh, don't be afraid to change and learn to read those birds. And whenever you're flaring them off, you know you've got to make some changes. Sometimes we make changes to the decoys. Most of the time we're making changes to our calling. Uh, when you get new birds that are coming in or early in the season, typically you can be more aggressive with them. If you're being aggressive, uh, you see that things are going south, do not be afraid to change what you're doing. And sometimes birds will decoy well, they will not respond to calling. Don't be hard-headed, don't keep calling at them. Uh, there's plenty of times, I'm a world champion duck caller, there's plenty of times I'll put my call down, let them work the decoys, because at the end of the day, killing ducks is what it's all about. Guys, we've got three new calls that are coming out for 2016 that we are really excited about. And the first one we're calling the Elite Butcher. Now this is a cut down style call. Now I'm gonna tell you right up front, this call is not for everybody. And for those of you that are not familiar, a cut down style call uh, originated when, when guys, it, it's uh, very popular in Arkansas, Louisiana area, they would take the old PSO calls and they would modify them. They would file on the tone board, they would cut them down and give them a unique sound. Now, they take more air than a traditional call, but they have a really great sound and you'll find that even when you get at a distance from them, they sound very realistic and they sound very realistic to ducks. And that combination of realism and volume makes them very deadly when used in the timber. Now the sound that we're after in a cut down call is we're wanting a short pop in a cadence. So we want it to sound something like this. All right, now that's really not blowing hard into the call, but the air presentation has to be a short burst of air. If you try to blow continuous air through this like a traditional J-frame, you're gonna wear yourself out. So what I'm doing, I'll put it through the back of the call, short burst of air. We turn around. Now on the low end with the butcher, it's also about air presentation, keeping everything a little bit sharper. So basic quack. You'll find that it sounds better with a little bit of a quicker burst of air with the quack and feed call. It requires more air pressure, just make sure that you keep short bursts of air going. So the call is all about pop and fast, crisp sounds. Now the next call that we've got available in 2016, we call Murder, and trust me, this call has earned its name. Now what this call allows you to do is bark like a cut down call, but it also maintains the characteristics of a traditional J-frame to allow you to put finesse on the bottom end. So if I want to bark on the call like a cut down, All I'm doing is I'm backing off my air pressure. If you blow this just like a cut down, you will air lock the call. So the secret is actually backing off the pressure. And what I'm putting into the call is just a short burst of air. Tut, 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 tut. I'm gonna open my hand. Tut, 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 tut. And then when I throw the note, then it sounds just like a cut down call. And then, as the duck's getting closer, and if I want to show some finesse, it's the best of both worlds. Now another call that we've got coming out in 2016 is the Elite Legacy. Now this is a competition style call that will let you do the Main Street style competitions and it also has great duck on bottom, uh, which is good for the competition as well as the field.
So if you're wanting to hold the trophy on the Main Street stage, or if you need a call for open water conditions and hold a full strap of mallards, the Legacy is definitely the call for you. Guys, thanks so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this instructional half as much as we enjoyed putting it together. And thanks also to our sponsors who partner with us to help us bring it to you. You know, when I was growing up, I had the help of a lot of men who were very gracious to help me become a better hunter and competitive caller. So if there's anything that we can do for you, please let us know. Uh, follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also check out our website at EliteCalls.net. Thanks a lot, and God bless.